Okay. The bottoming process is fascinating. It's filled with heart. It's very intriguing as well. Was there something about the premise or maybe about John as his work as a novelist or all of the above that made you want to be a part of this production? Yeah, um, you know, it was lucky enough to come my way and I um, I think it's a really, really genius play. You know, the playwright Nicholas Palapil is just so smart, so hardworking, um, you know, so well-trained and just an incredible, incredible playwright. Um, you know, he's, his perspective is so important. Um, you know, he is this, I feel like this emerging generation's voice and one that is very, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very, what's the word? Um, it's just very life affirming to, to see his perspective and thoughts on everything. And it really is in alignment with what, what I want to say as well as an artist. And so, um, yeah, it's a very exciting new work, which is incredibly poignant. And, you know, we're still, our new work so we're sort of you know we've been workshopping the last couple of weeks really I mean in saying that Nicholas has been doing most of the work rewriting and rewrites rewriting um and yeah really crafting something that I think people are going to absolutely love in a lot of lot of different ways how then was John originally described to you and his connection with Milo well, um, we did a reading of it um, during the pandemic, actually, over Zoom. Um, and, you know, he is, you know, I don't want to speak too much, I, I suppose, to the, the themes, because because that's obviously Nicholas, Nicholas's, you know, um, and Rodney's really, you know, what, what they want to say um, with the play. Um, but, you know, the, the way John is, is, you know, he's this white American gay man from Nebraska who has had, you know, has worked hard, but also had a lot of success, um, with what he, he's done. And he's, you know, quite obsessed with his own struggle of being, uh, you know, a gay man in America uh, right now and his parents not really accepting him and that whole struggle. So he is, he has a blind spot um, to maybe the struggle of people of color and equating all of that within himself um, is really interesting the way that he, um, yeah, I think I think his blind spot uh, is interesting. That's something that I've seen a lot in, um, you know, in society today as well. Yeah. Well, I think the chemistry between you and George Salazar uh, seemingly will be quite palpable. Did you know him or were you familiar with him before being co-stars in this beautiful play? We didn't know each other personally, um, you know, and I think at the reading there was definitely, you know, we're, we're a great match in that sense and we do have incredible chemistry, um, you know, so it's super fun. I mean, it's just very easy. He's such an incredible actor, incredible performer, obviously, um, has such a stage presence and such experience, um, you know, and it just, the character just really, flows out of him um in such a beautiful way it's so he keeps it so buoyant and um still very deep um you know and it is a bit of uh you know it's got a lot of comedy in it too um so i think it's very entertaining and yeah i mean we're having the most incredible time he is the most wonderful person actor the best scene partner anyone could ask for honestly um just fabulous and really just takes the lead very confident very funny um and yeah so 
yeah, it's 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 a very very fun process. I know you mentioned that there's still a bit of workshopping to go, but were there some moments or are there some scenes I should say that really challenged you as an actor or maybe are your favorites ones that really hold a special place in your heart that you can tease about without giving too much away of the sentiment or the significance? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. You know, I think um, uh, the challenge for me, I guess, has been, you know, those the small different the differences in, in my opinion and my evolution and, and John's perspective and evolutions you know there's 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 some subtle differences which are sometimes harder you know because there are so they are very minute um and others that are larger um so you know I'm really um I feel like I'm I'm gradually getting better and better as an actor and I will until the day I die I don't think um you ever quite you know get to perfection which is what's so cool or at least I feel like I haven't, um, but you really do get to, you know, I, I'm really feeling every day that I feel like I get better is a good day for me, no matter who sees it or where it happens in a sense, um, you know? So um, all that said, I'm losing track of your question, but I... Um, uh, Scenes that you're personally <laughs> you. special significance to you exactly. or challenges. <laughs> <What? laughs> um, yeah, you know, so um, it's just wonderful to be, um, you know, doing a play again uh, because you get to move through time in real time, you know, instead of these little snippets even though it sort of feels like that in rehearsal, but you, um, it's such a luxury to be able to rehearse, um, you know, and not just be in a room by yourself or with someone running lines and, you know, a coach or whatever, and then having to just suddenly do it so quickly on set and then do it over and over and over again for three hours, um, which is great. And I'm not complaining, but I am complaining. <laughs> You know, uh, we complain when we're out of work and then we complain when we're getting too much work. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but no, it's just, you know, it does come with its different challenges and, you know, being in a space with furniture that you're not really having to pretend so much because I just love the theatre in that sense. Um, I'm very used to it at what I started out doing. Um, so, yeah, the scenes that... Um, I love most you know it gets it gets quite intense towards the end of the play and that's probably my favorite um part of things um but you know there is a very cute scene um uh which involves a cigarette and it's it's all different layers and levels and um you know the way that things evolve with these two is really cool and I love just being you know, physically being in a space and breathing and being on stage um, and with all its little subtleties of maybe, you know, when you've arrived, what time of day it is, all those things sort of live in your body. And it's very, um, it's very fun, you know, to be able to play with all of those things and make sure that you're telling the story, you know, with, with everything that you have you know um that's that's what's so fun I guess it's it's a kind of a focus and concentration that takes you out of yourself and into you know the moment that that um because there's so many different things to focus on it's really really cool yeah the play is written by Nicholas Philippil but it's directed by Rodney Toe talk about working with him as a director he is so incredible um he just has a really in insane instinct um but also you know he knows what is entertaining to an audience and what's when when a scene is really firing and cooking with gas you know um so he 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 sees way more potential in a scene than i ever would and then tells me what it should be and then I'm good at then you know going okay great I'll take that you know and really 
bring it to life. So I think it's a good combination. Um, I would definitely be lost without him and without that. And he's really shaping the play from beginning to end, tracking the relationship, tracking all these amazing things um, that you just don't get at all when you're doing TV, I find, um, obviously, because it's very like compartmentalized and there's different directors coming in and it's all very sort of, you know, quick set up, quickly rehearse and quickly, you know, get it done. Um, so you don't have this opportunity. So yeah, look, it's, it's an absolute dream working with him, honestly. Well, Roddy has said the play is about, or at least one of the themes is what does it take to have a successful modern day relationship? Is that what you hope really lingers with it? Because there's so many serious issues like racial stereotypes, power struggles, um, love, uh there's race there's power there's all sorts of different themes that truly uh exude in this play what do you hope lingers with people who come to see it i think it's going to trigger things and questions in people um you know customized to that person and their experiences and their beliefs and it's gonna wash over them and bring up I think the right questions in in every individual because you know everyone's going to take away something a little bit different um, but it brings all these issues up um, to the surface for you to see for you to judge but in a very um, real um, very crafted way very um, specific way so that you can then have you know your own reaction to that right and that would be very telling for yourself but also you know so 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 it really it really shows the complexity of relationships today race today of you know white supremacy and how it's happening and how it's manifesting itself and you know deconstructing itself and also putting its roots in deeper and how it's in everything we do and how these are also just two human beings um, trying to be together you know getting all the different nuances of both characters and the perspectives of both characters they've been very clever to not demonize um you know so i feel like then you know people's defenses won't be up because they'll be able to see the complex truth um, and that's sort of undeniable in that way, you know. So I'm hoping that the, you know, the three dimensional um, aspect of the story and the characters will really allow people to um, relate, you know, to all sides and sort of come away, hopefully a little bit wiser. But yeah, <laughs> people will come, come away, you know, hopefully, a, you know, wiser and, um, be able to think about these things and then again you know I'm also not obviously any kind of oracle on on these matters either you know I'm Certainly, still yes. it out for myself which is what's also so fascinating about doing this play you know is that I am growing as well and learning yeah very well said my goodness <laughs> And it must mean a lot that <laughs> that this is being done at the LGBTQ Center. Uh, it's a very poignant place for it to take place, um, you know, and uh, it, it's a, a beautiful production that deserves a, a great spotlight. So I'm excited for people to get to see it here come May, come through June. <laughs> They'll get to see this yeah. performance of you. Uh, so uh, I, I'm looking forward to people getting to explore it for you. Yeah, I, it's incredible, incredible that it's at the LGBT Center as well, the Renberg Theater there, where so many Grammy, you know, people have been on that stage, um, you know, but not, and not only that, the legacy of that LGBT Center is very, you know, far reaching. And I didn't even realize how important it is um, and the kind of work that they do and, you know, the donations that they get and how people rely on, on that. And um, it really is very special to be a part of that and to be in some way, you know, kind of 
in the infrastructure of that doing something. So, yeah. Got to keep raising funds for them and doing what we can to get more productions back on, keep on going on their stage. It's a, a beautiful place to shine a light on such topical stories, especially <laughs> I feel like this one is a good one too, because it mixes modern day issues with timely issues that we've people of all different sexes and races experience. So I think it's going to be a beautiful production, no matter what your core beliefs are or what your fundamentals are, where your heart lies. Exactly. You said it so well there too. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't have put it better myself, really. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not to take up too much more of your time, but I'd be remiss if I didn't say with the flash coming to it, and you've been a wonderful, a wonderful cog in this beautiful series. What has it meant to you to be a part of such an iconic series? It's been, it's, I feel so grateful, first of all, um, for this, you know, amazing story that has gone on and on and on for way longer than I think we ever anticipated at least when we were doing the pilot we just wanted to make it into a series you know um and then get more than 13 and then you know so it kind of um you know but it ended very abruptly for me um which I didn't quite see at the time but you know over time in perspective it was quite heartbreaking um, you know, not to be a part of this thing that sort of, you know, just went on and on and on. Um, but then again, I got to come back and then I got to come back, you know, I'm coming back for the last um, four episodes, uh, which I'm pretty sure everyone knows by now. Um, but, you know, we don't know, they don't know what, how, um, and I'm not saying anything at all, um, because I'm just, yeah, <laughs> not saying anything, but it's airing in May, um, the last four episodes ever. And they've done such an incredible job. And I actually went to Warner Brothers yesterday to, to listen to them scoring because they're live scoring the last, I think, four, three or four um, episodes. And that was incredible. And they actually, um, they got me to conduct the orchestra as well, <laughs> which was kind of amazing. Um, it was really cool uh, seeing my face and then conduct, like, like I felt like Lydia Tarr. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was so, it, it's such good closure um, for me to be able to then be a part of it all again. It meant a lot to me um, personally and professionally. Um, so it was kind of amazing. I was, I had a moment yesterday saying goodbye to the flash on the Warner brothers lot. Um, because I had my first job, there was an Acura car commercial and I was walking around the New York streets thinking about that and thinking about how wonderful it is, how it has been to be a part of such a cool story and have such a great character who I love so much and great people that I love so much and have some of them, you know, my you know, best friends, you know, um, so yeah, it's a mixed emotion and ultimately the overriding one is just kind of gratitude, closure, happiness. Um, yeah. And just looking back kind of in awe of, of, of everything. Yeah. Have you kept any mementos from your time on the series? Of course, maybe your chair back, but any other little bits or bobs? <laughs> Yes, I have both my chair backs um, actually right on my desk, just to remind me. This is from the pilot, actually. <laughs> and they found it and gave it to me. Isn't that sweet? Everyone was like always giving me gifts out of pity and love. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then this is the last one. So I've sort of got these two on my desk as, you know. Um, Beautiful you know, bookends. In between. And yeah. Um, beautiful, beautiful bookends. And I always dreamed of dying very dramatically since I was in grade three, since I saw someone die called Rick on Thundersub. Um, <laughs> and everyone was sad over me. And so my, all my dreams came true. <laughs> and then some. Um, but uh, <laughs> what was I going to say? Yeah, I've kept a lot of things. I got, I got an amazing, like, pea coat. I've got boots. I've got 
I've also got like my bat my my badge and I've got like a lot of IDs um and stuff yeah anyway I could go on <laughs> what are the other projects you've been busy working on are you just been concentrating on the play for this time being well um so yeah I finished the flash in Feb end of February beginning of March and then I came back and did a movie called the, Hol the holiday exchange um with Taylor Frey and Kyle Richards um which was amazing because I am a huge Beverly Hills Housewife fan <laughs> so I was uh yeah I was queening out um but uh I only worked with her for a day um but it was a really fun project I got to be um uh I got to be English for the first time on screen um which was kind of amazing um and challenging as well because you know I'm Zimbabwe and Australian um and I wanted to be obviously I wanted to you know be very convincingly you know it's one thing doing the accent it's another thing being authentic it just seems to take forever and sometimes it you know happens and sometimes it's a struggle so that was cool and challenging yeah now this play and then I'm also in um uh Mrs. American Pie which I don't know if it's official but they they've changed the name to Palm Royale um so that's coming out on Apple TV um pretty soon I, I don't know when don't quote me but it's like August or something um, and hopefully season two is going to be a thing as well, but I don't know. Um, so that's been super fun because I got to work with Kristen Wiig um, a lot, which was just insane. I didn't couldn't even believe at first that I was going to be in a scene with her, just with the two of us. You know, it was a short scene. That's my first little thing. And then the role kind of just got bigger and bigger. And with Ricky Martin and Alison Janney and Laura Dern, and Carol Burnett it was an absolute trip for me <laughs> it's just it was great because I was fine totally fine between action and cut thank goodness but I was a complete mess um at every other time <laughs> so much fangirling going on I would be a little overwhelmed but uh I know you're old hat at this you're focused was, uh, you have to it keep it together I was, I was at a hundred <laughs> and I should have been, I needed to be at a 10 to have a normal conversation. <laughs> and then for some reason, you know, they called action. My heart rate dropped and I was... Back to Rick Cosnet in the role. <laughs> yeah, could be more at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing my little thing. And then, you know, and then I get cut. And then I'm like, oh! You know, just like... <laughs> I have so many like, questions for all of you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just like awkward and like too much. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never work in this town again, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. It was like, <laughs> uh, was my like, goodness, it was so me. surreal. I'm sure that you're like, me. I was like, <laughs> I'm fine. I can die now. <laughs> <laughs> you have had such a wonderful and beautiful career so far. What would you like to say to everyone who are fans and supporters of the wonderful work you continue to do that? just touches so many of us. Oh, thank you so much. Honestly, I'm I'm really overwhelmed. And, you know, there's been people who just loved me since the very beginning before they even saw me act. They were like so supportive. And I was kind of, you know, um, yeah, just, I, I would just like to say, honestly, th thank you so much to the fans because, you know, I think they also loved Eddie so much that it, it it really prompted, you know, they have such power, they really do. And they prompted, you know, it was probably part of the decision-making process. Okay, do people like him? You know, great. Um, you know, we'll stick him back in. Um, and, you know, just the response is, is, is so beautiful to that people really see what you're doing um, means the world to me. You know, they, they get it, they understand um uh what you were trying to convey um you know you're trying to this human being that they relate to that and, and <clears throat> relate to the story it sounds like I'm about to cry um but um I'm not really I'm just so grateful so thankful <laughs> um but no really it's uh it's 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 quite it's it's it's, a, it's almost too much to take in sometimes um but I just feel so grateful that I've been the jobs that I've got as well have just been um so wonderful because it's you know there's certainly jobs i didn't get 
Um, but the ones I did get happened to be really, really cool ones. Um, so I'm super grateful to that. And without, you know, the support of the fans, it, I would be nothing, you know. Um, and to be on such big shows with such a huge fan following, um, it's really helped me, you know, just so much in my career and life and everything. So, yeah, I love them. I love doing fan conventions. I love going, meeting people, um, you know, you can't, yeah, I, I love the adoration. I love it when it's all about me. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.